Sure. What is the use of democracy in the eyes of enlightenment? Well, in the eyes of enlightenment, there's no democracy. <clears throat> As such. In other words, there is no party, there's beings, all beings. And Parties, as such, are part of a more materialistic structure of functioning in the world, in society, simply set up to satisfy the, let's say, the general needs of factions, peeps who have agreement with certain ideas and views <coughs> and needs, understandably. See. So they need representation, so you have a party that represents and so sadly, not one party can represent all peeps, because all peeps are on different levels of the path, understandably. See, everyone is in their own time world, so how awesome is that? Everyone's in their own time world, right? Let alone in their own party. <laughs> They're in their own time world, it's even more complicated in a sense. Yeah, so everyone is in their own karmic universe. And the fact that there can be agreement and, say, some kind of coordination, confidence, or harmony, or unity between beings is almost miraculous when we look at it from a microscopic viewpoint in terms of all the commons and forces and energies and programs involved in uh, each being, especially in terms of the unconscious, which is another way of saying they have the universe, the mind of the universe inside them, so the mind of the primordial, to say the least. See? They have the mind of evolution inside them. See? They have a little bit of everything in the past, present, and future inside them. So the fact that we can get consensus is amazing. So I think the factions and the idea of democracy is to try and bring certain people together. Yeah. But I think there should be something that's more common. That's the heart. See, so when we can become more or less resonant with what the heart's purpose is, then that that should be something uh, which is much more, I say, universal in its purpose, its scope. So when heart issues arise, that should ring a certain chord throughout the entire planet, see, like when a disaster occurs. And I mean a natural disaster. Then, then we seem to be in the proper resonance there. But when we are creating disasters in terms of warfare, the resonance is, is not there. Okay. So before the resonance can come in, and we need to suffer enough, as a rule, see, see. as individuals, and then as a group, as a family, and this is a topic touched before, and then as maybe a society, and then maybe as a nation, see, and maybe as one planet in, in, the, in, the, in the, the midst of infinite planets and globes uh, representing realities and levels of consciousness throughout the universes, not just the universe, we see one universe, but the reason why we see one universe is because we have physical eyes, and that's all those eyes were designed to see, but our imaginations can see infinite universes. See? So we have an inner eye we can use to see infinity see? with. Because the eye that can see infinity is infinity. Yeah. And we are that. 
See? So getting back to the comment on democracy, well, ultimately, everyone wants freedom. So we need realization then to have true democracy beyond labels and party games, see, national politics, see, then there's real freedom to be safe, say, uh, fulfilled as a human being. Can you draw a correlation between people's political views and their level of spiritual development? Well, in some cases that's valid. That's valid. Yeah. Yeah. You have many, many religious people involved in partyism. You have uh, schisms everywhere. And religious people in particular who seem to have a certain kind of say, altruistic agenda in many cases, want their government to satisfy those purposes and be as, let's say, uh, as productive in terms of whatever the country or the system, if we're talking about a government system, uh, envisions itself as being able to do, whether that's to take care of the people, rebuild cities, give people land, give people grants, send people here, there, wherever, for educational purposes, all of this is part of the same function. See? So we're talking about then generosity and the need to educate, that is to, to expand the mind. So there has to be this basic impulse in everybody relative to, uh, let's say, uh, taking care of one's family in a bigger sense in this case. So yes, parties, and spiritual evolution seem to be somewhat relative to one another in some cases. And we could say by the same token that uh, a person that is entering a higher state of evolutionary realization is not into any party. See? See? So there could be a party, see, of one, and a party of many, right? all perhaps. And I think that's something which has to come from individual realization more than seeing it manifest in the world, which is about partyism. It's about particular. It's about selected. It's about self. It's about uh, separation. It's not about in integrity in a cosmic sense. See, integration see, in terms of an international sense, particularly. See, because many people could have the, the say, vision of the United Nations say, on paper. But when we see that the United Nations is really about chaos, see, a difference, see, even magnificent difference, see, and uh, ignorance and suffering, uh, there's a lot of work to be done at the ground level before we could say there's a, a real basis for calling nations united, in a sense. They are one because they are nations. See, they are realities. See, they are, let's say, separate entities with boundaries and borders and a right to life, so to speak, a right to evolve, a right to culture, a right to, let's say, progress, which is a purpose being on earth. See, whether you're high or low, it's all about the progression. It's got nothing to do with your culture, because we have a pre-culture, and the pre-culture is a spiritual world. And we have to understand that that is a force in itself for many beings who enter their particular ripper blood stream and seem to be out of sync with it. See, not because of the blood, but because they have a purpose that uh, is being fed from somewhere else. It could be from above, it could be from within. See, the psyche, within the mind, see, within the unconscious, within the superconscious. See. So we need to be so clear as to be able to ascertain what it is for us, despite our party of choice, because we're talking about freedom of choice. See, these are all huge questions with implications, very, very profound implications. Is there choice? Is there will? See, see, uh, is there individuality? See, is there freedom? And under what conditions? So all of these are very important questions.
Can people with conflicting views cooperate, or is consensus required? It depends on what's needed. It's not even consensus. It depends on what's needed. In the case of a disaster, regardless of what your background is, you just move the same way. That's what I love about disasters. See, they help you to transcend difference and culture and self-preservation, even. They make heroes out of cowards. Especially when you see your own people sort of uh, at risk or in danger or in a very, very critical situation. See, you become super peeps. See, you become spiritual, spiritualized. See, you become empowered, see, which is the whole purpose of the spiritual evolution of mankind in terms of its potential consciousness. See, it's empowerment. See, to be more than your laziness, to be more than your bad habits. And self-indulgent programs, to be more than human in that sense, because that human in that sense means subhuman, not quite up to, you know, being human, fully human, see? master, fully human, that's master of your life. See? Most people are satisfied with just being victims, and, as being members of some group of, let's say, people who don't care about their lives, or the lives of others. Whether that's at the business level or the street level, it's the same thing. Looking out for yourself and taking all you can for yourself, which is not bad, but it's not, it's not necessarily good for, for the balance of things, see, or for oneself, ultimately. Yeah. So, given that, would, let's say, utopian views be better achieved through a constant state of conflict and crisis? Utopian views? Well, utopia is a state of mind. You have to find your happiness here. You have to know that you're already in heaven. See, so you need, you need a certain kind of inner evolutionary impulse to realize that you, you've been given grace and you are in heaven, but you don't know that. See, because of your physicality and your materiality, you don't see that heaven is, is not physical, see, see, spiritual. It's a spiritual state, an inner state of realization. And therefore you have the saints and the advanced people out here who bring light to everybody because of their, their state of realization. See, and they bring peace here. That's heaven. See, peace, joy, beauty. These are things of heaven. See, these are things of the divine in a most positive sense. Yeah. Equality, you know, ultimate equality. And realization, neutrality. See, all of this is part of the inner world. So, the inner world is first and foremost on the agenda of anything called evolution. See, and that is not like moving, fo moving forward. It's not moving forward. We can say moving forward and up, but it's moving deeper <clears throat> within, towards the proverbial kingdom within, that's a good poetic symbol for the, our potential, as a kingdom within, see, and we're talking within the atom, subatomic particles, kingdom within, see. Einstein had a sense of that, <clears throat> see, see, in terms of the uh, theory of relativity, see. Is spiritual leadership democratic in nature? Spiritual leadership, if there is such a thing <coughs> that uh, if people could agree to is reality or even universal, yeah, it's really about uh, bringing uh, everyone to the, let's say, uh, awareness that we have potential, basically. Sacred potential. That means potential worth preserving, worth working with, worth, worth developing, see, looking at. See, talking about, cultivating, see, manifesting, recreating, see, transforming. See. And so we need to understand that spiritual leadership means that <clears throat> what the within is, is made available to everybody. That everyone has the same potential. See. And it's not that there's a God game, the God game of, well, this God is going to get you there if you do this. <clears throat> But wait a minute now, I heard that this God will get you there if you do that. Say, no, no, wait a minute, I found a deal that's even better. Say, there's no God in that. Say, there's no God that you, you can bring down to that level, that's true. Say, transcendent. Say, because what we have there is man making God, see, to fit its own desires, its own ambitions, its own, its own racket. See, its own neuroses. Reducing God to self-neurosis is not, 
That's not wisdom. No. See, the God that is God that you can't even speak of is getting closer to what it right, really might be in terms of where we need to go, in terms of any practice we might need to assume in order to expand our consciousness and to some degree realize our potential as spirits. Spirit first, heart first. Then we have leadership here that is universal, uniform to all beings. You have a cosmic code. Yeah. Does, let's say, a spiritually uh, aware society uh, concentrate its resources on the weakest uh, people among them, or do we allocate our resources to help the most capable bring the whole society up? Well, we have to have intelligence before we know what to do with the resources. If you have intelligence, then you see, if, you're, if, you're, if you have real, let's say, deep instincts about family, you have a newborn, right, an immigrant, let's say, newborn, newly here, you feed them, you bring them up. You don't, you don't leave them out there whining and crying for food and drink and clothing, because it pulls their vibrations down. And when you have too much of that, it's pulling the whole thing down. So you have to provide. See, this is not communism, this is familyism. And then you're being true to your ancestors, which go way back, and they weren't all wealthy noble peeps in all cases. And so we need to take care of uh, business in that sense. That's what uh, I think the Republic was built on freedom, justice, and liberty for all. That really means wealth for all, too. Justice is wealth. Fair share. Justice. Come on now. I'm not a politician. It's just baby stuff. Justice. Where is it? Yeah. I want to make sure it's there from the get go. Welcome to the nation, the new nation, the great nation provides you with these basics for you to build upon. Already, see, well, we have a huge nation here, the greatest nation ever, see, yeah. someday. Do nations create conflict to unify their people? Do nations create conflict? No, they don't need to create conflict. Conflict is normal. See, the conflict is all right. Conflict creates nations. <laughs> Nations don't create conflict. Nations and nations because of conflict they, and the need for resolving things. So it's an ongoing process because you're in a cosmic field of change and transformation. So there's always going to be demands that exceed your means. That's the law. That's nature. And then survival of the fittest to a certain degree. But not fittest as egos, fittest as wise ones. Fittest as egos you just want to take for yourself. Kill for yourself. We've done that. Our species has been master and genius of killing for itself. See, it's already there. Done. Now we have to love for ourselves. See. That is not quite done yet. See. Jesus didn't see that realized in his lifetime. He was a victim of, let's say, the, the lack of that realization. Love needs to be realized now and forevermore. So we need to get to love, to be love, in order to live love. Are a nation's armies a negation of its spirituality? Not so much a negation. It should be a demonstration that it has learned lessons of survival. And well enough to protect itself. You must protect yourself. Okay. Warriors must be warriors. Priests must be priests. Families must be families. Okay. Yeah. Artists must be artists. Healers must be healers. Okay. We have to understand when that is the case and when that is not the case. Okay. So warriors must be warriors. Without that, then the, the dark element rules. And who's ready for that? Who wants that to be the case? When reason and intelligence should rule the planet, 
so that everyone has more security, see? because there are bigger things and more important, devastating things that are in the in the makings now, in time, yeah, that people need to be unified with regards to. See? Bigger than yourself and your politics, right? Yeah. Cosmic so, change. We have to be listening for that and preparing for that see? on the ground, in the sky, on the earth. Is it unenlightened for a nation to put its own citizens' needs above those of other people? When you're speaking about nations, don't confuse that with enlightened or unenlightened. Right? There is no enlightenment see, when it is what it is, see, in terms of power, self-power. Enlightenment is something that is beyond that, so to speak. Tolerant of that, see, but not limited to that as such. See. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand enlightenment is transcendent and not to be used in terms of politics. It is, it is beyond politics. Enlightenment transcends politics and enables coexistence to be active and even realized at a much higher level of heart resonance and heart presence so that there is much more life. Uh, say respect, life, dignity, and compassion. Is the idea of royalty outmoded? Royalty is a state of mind. See, if you're talking about material royalty, uh, it is what it is, has its purpose. People do need leadership, not only in the past, it, people need leadership now. See, people will need leadership moving forward. So leadership is important. A, a leader is more important than a party. A true leader is more important than a party. And sometimes one comes, one is selected, not by the peeps, but by something more important, destiny. And it has to go that way, up until it can't. So you have dark leaders and you have positive leaders here. The dark leaders come in to bring out the light leaders, the leaders of light, see. When the dark gets darker than it demands, it's screaming for light to be stronger, see, so that it be overwhelmed. The darkness begs for the light in its demonstrations of power and wrath. It begs for the light and what happens? The light sure as, sure as heaven shows up. Can one be both a political leader and a spiritual leader? Spiritual leader is always a leader. Uh, not that it's the being who is a spiritual leader feels itself as a spiritual leader. If it's a spiritual leader, then it's a leader by forces beyond itself. See? And there are a lot of people who have the view, oh no, if, it, if there's a spiritual leader, it's what they want. No, that's not true. Who wants the devastation of the earth? See? Who wants cataclysm, particularly? These things happen because they're set up to happen. See, there's much more that happens because it needs to happen than anyone chooses. See, we don't all choose to be in a, a catastrophic disaster. It yeah, doesn't make any sense. So we have to stop empowering and, and investing in egotism and selfishness and these kinds of ideas and start to recognize that which is more profound than self, which is the heart. Sometimes the heart creates comments conditions sets things up. We need to be able to recognize that. See, when is the heart at play? See, when is the heart in charge? See, and so we're talking about spiritual leadership, then it's heart leadership. And it's one for all, all for one. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very straight across. Yeah. And also pointing to the highest wisdom for everyone. That means mastery, yeah. self-mastery. We don't mean conquering, we don't mean mastery by way of aggression, mastery by way of compassion. Yeah. Now that might be from another plane, another level of reality altogether, as compared to what is existing now. But that it, reality, even if it is a heavenly reality or idealistic place, utopia, right, beyond this plane of reality still has power here.
because it is real in itself. Heaven is reality. Known better once you are out of the body. Recognized more properly once you are free of the, the barriers and the bondage of the flesh. And you see it, you know it better, more directly. Because you're not the flesh, but you are. You are deceived into thinking that's who you, what you are, and your self is all wrapped up in that, and sort of deluded by that, and confused by the flesh. And the flesh is not who you are, ever. It's what you have to use. It's your vehicle here, but it's not you. It's your temporary garb, your mask, your mock-up, see, of purpose here on earth, and then it's gone, it's done, and you must move on. Do governments preserve culture, or...? Understood. No question there. That's what government's about, self-preservation. There's no question there. That's not valid. Next one. And are nation-states and borders an outmoded concept? Well, they are self-motored as uh, self-defenses, self-preservation. They are an extension of the same mechanism, so they are consistent see, with uh, human survival. And the issue is that, see, it's not that you wear armor, see, and, and how you, you, you look in your armor, but what you do with it to bring more wrath upon yourself <laughs> by being wrathful to others. That's just karmic law, that's not religious, it's mechanical, it's scientific. <laughs> Is one world government a more spiritual concept? Well, it's not necessarily a spiritual concept, let's say. It's kind of a fact, a psychic fact. We are one world. <laughs> There's no getting around that we are here. We are Earth's peeps. Uh, one world. And if the world goes, this planet goes, everyone on it is going, so there's no question about that. See? Now, are we also different beings with different levels of uh, reality in terms of our own time and space worlds within ourselves? Yes, because we didn't begin here on Earth. See? We are passing through the Earth dimension. This is purgatory. So we are here on purgatory for the time being, to make the best use of it for ourselves and our loved ones, see, our relatives, make use of it. See. And that means to do good, see, to bring goodness here, see, and beauty, and make this apparently hellish realm by nature see, a heavenly place to be on, see, by intention, sacred intention. Should spiritual people avoid politics? No, spiritual people can play politics because sometimes without you know, being really too political in a sense, you, you, might, you might be able to help out. See. You need to know where the light is going. So that's up to the individual to determine where the light is going rather than where the might is going. But where's the light going beyond the might? <laughs> 